Before I start the video, I have an announcement. I have started posting commentary videos on my second channel, which is linked in the description. It's been really fun working on smaller videos for that channel in between the bigger projects that I work on for this channel. I've also been doing some live streams on this channel, so stay on the lookout for those. All right, on with the video. Everything I'll be stating in this video is my subjective opinion about public allegations, which is protected by fair use and the First Amendment. So don't be an idiot and try to sue me for defamation. Body positivity. What comes to mind when I say those words? Maybe learning to accept your body, learning to love the way you look and feel comfortable in your skin just the way you are? Wrong! What should come to mind when I say body positivity is this German man. Body positivity is when German men invite you into their pool because they think you're sexy. Oh, you hate your body? Well, this rainbow-haired German dude loves your body, so if you want to love your body, then take your clothes off and get in his pool. Today, we will be looking at a body-positive community known as Paradise. That's paradise spelled P-E-A-R like the fruit. I'm not exactly sure why they spell it this way. I guess the implication is that this is a community for people who are shaped like pears. Anyway, this community claims to be a safe, welcoming, non-judgmental environment that is full of acceptance and love. Doesn't that sound nice? I mean, who wouldn't want to join a community of acceptance and love? Well, if you want to join this community, then all you have to do is join their Discord server, and then you can go visit the house of this German man named Stefan. According to the bio on his website, Stefan is a software developer from Berlin who has lived in Las Vegas since 2011. Stefan is the founder of Paradise and runs their TikTok account that has over 200,000 followers. The account posts a bunch of videos of Stefan partying in his home with various plus-sized women. The account tries to give off this appearance that it's a fun, welcoming environment where plus-sized people can be free to be themselves, but over the past few years, it has turned out that Paradise has a dark side. In my opinion, the main reason Stefan created Paradise is because he has a fetish for fat women, something he regularly brags about. And the best way for him to draw in as many fat women as possible is to claim that he has created a body positive safe space. If he posted something on TikTok saying, I love to fuck fat women, so if you're a fat woman who wants to get fucked, come over to my pool. He knows that he wouldn't get nearly as many responses from women as he does by claiming that his house is a body positive safe space. In my opinion, Stefan is the perfect example of a man who uses progressive buzzwords to get what he wants from women. Body positivity, empowerment, judgment free. He's using all of the words that he thinks these women want to hear in order to let their guards down. Now, I understand that some people just have a fetish for larger women that they can't necessarily control, and I'm not inherently against people creating fetish communities, but fetish communities only work when everyone is on the same page and everyone is getting explicit consent every step of the way. And if your intention is to create a fetish community, you need to be upfront about that. It is not okay to market yourself to the public as a body positive safe space when your actual intention is to hit on a bunch of these women because of your fetish for them. It is very true that it's great for plus size people to have safe spaces where they can feel safe from the constant bullying and harassment that plus size people face, but most people don't consider safe spaces very safe if they have to be worried about sexual advances from the creator of that space. Multiple women after leaving Paradise have expressed how they felt uncomfortable with the way Stefan would DM them asking them questions about how 
how much they weigh and making flirtatious comments about their bodies and trying to get them to send him nudes. Obviously, I'm not saying that Stefan should never flirt with any fat woman, but if you've had multiple women express that they're uncomfortable with your constant advances, that's a pretty clear sign that you need to stop what you're doing. On the TikTok account, they'll regularly post videos where they have all of the women line up and show off the bathing suits that they're wearing. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this, but when you have openly admitted that you fetishize fat women, there is a very fine line between doing something to empower women and doing something to objectify them. Because on the one hand, plus-sized women should be allowed to feel confident in their bodies, but on the other hand, I don't think most women would feel very empowered by being paraded around by a man who openly fetishizes them. If I were a woman, I would personally never want this man anywhere near me. He seems to see himself as some sort of sex god who's a gift to plus-size women everywhere. Name something you might hurt yourself riding on. I especially love these thirst traps that he does with Christmas lights. He clearly thinks this makes him look very sexy, but it actually makes him look like something straight out of a horror movie. Stefan seems to think that he's doing a service for these women because most people in society don't find them attractive, but he does. So he is so proud of the ways he makes them feel more confident in their bodies. And he's also talked about how he's proud that he's made children feel more comfortable in their bodies. I've had a 16 year old hit me up on TikTok and literally tell me that my content was the reason that she put on a bikini and made a TikTok swimming in a lake. Wow, Stefan, I am so proud of you that you made that child feel more comfortable wearing a bikini. Great job. Based on this screenshot, he has been accused of texting minors, commenting on how cute they are, asking them how much they weigh, and commenting on their hips. Now, he claims that he's just doing this to make them feel empowered. I might have called a 17-year-old cute, but that was in order to hype her up. In my opinion, this is very sus. Call me crazy, but I don't think anyone in their 40s should be texting minors, calling them cuties, commenting on their bodies, and trying to help them feel more comfortable wearing bikinis. Let me take a second to thank today's sponsor, Casetify, who makes some of the best phone cases on the market. I was super excited when Casetify reached out to me because I actually already use a Casetify case that I got from my friend, Nick is not green. I've been using it for about three months now and I've honestly been loving it. The case feels super sturdy and well-made, and I like the texture on the back, and it's coated with Defensify, which is an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria. I love the amount of options that you can get with Casetify. I feel like a lot of cases on the market look kind of lame, but with Casetify, all of their designs are super stylish and trendy, and they have an endless amount of options. And you can design your own cases. I designed this case that says no sex before marriage to remind me of my promise that I made to the Lord not to sin. And just like the Lord protects me, Casetify cases are protected by Kitech technology, which offers drop protection of up to 9.8 feet for their ultra impact cases and 6.6 .6 feet for their impact cases. <laughs> And also, their cases are made with 65% recycled material, so you don't have to worry about destroying the planet with your case. So go to casetify.com slash MrBeard to get 15% off your order of Casetify cases, which make the perfect gift for friends and family. Thanks again, Casetify. Now, it would be one thing if Stefan was just a creepy guy who takes advantage of the body positivity movement to hit on fat women, but multiple women have accused Stefan of assaulting them, and when they brought these accusations to the public, he sued them for defamation. 
Recently, a judge threw out these defamation lawsuits because Stefan couldn't adequately prove that these women were lying about being assaulted. Now, Stefan claims that he did not assault these women, but really the only defense he has to stand on is a technicality. Based on this screenshot of an Instagram DM, he allegedly admitted to touching these women without their consent. In the state of Nevada, penetration is required for it to legally be considered assault. However, what he allegedly admitted to doing does fall under Nevada's legal definition of battery, which is any offensive touching done without someone's consent. However, many places do legally consider unwanted touching to be assault, which is why the judge threw out Stefan's defamation lawsuits, because if these women consider being touched without their consent assault, they are legally within their rights to share this opinion. According to the judge, it would only be considered defamation if Stefan could prove that he didn't touch them without their consent, but in the DM, he allegedly did admit to touching them without their consent. I've linked the court documents from the defamation lawsuit down below so you can read them for yourself. Later on, he said this in a TikTok live stream. If you believe that tapping or touching somebody's butt on top of their pants is sexual assault, I don't want you on my account. Literally, the only defense Stefan has to stand on is, um, technically, in the state of Nevada, what I did to you is considered battery, not assault. It's totally different. Whether what you allegedly did technically falls under the legal category of battery or assault, it is considered assault in many places, and regardless, it is still 100% illegal. You can still go to prison in the state of Nevada for committing battery, so why do you think it absolves you of any wrongdoing if what you did wasn't technically assault? You still allegedly admitted to violating two women's consent, so moving forward, no one should visit your creepy paradise. Because they can't trust that they won't be touched without consent, and if they do speak out about being touched without consent, you'll sue them for defamation. And of course, Stefan pulled out the classic victim-blaming excuses. I made two girls uncomfortable because I was a bit too touchy-feely after they had sent me nudes and given the impression that flirting was welcome. Just because someone gives you consent to touch them in one circumstance does not mean you have consent to touch them in another circumstance. And saying that you were a bit too touchy-feely is just a nice way of saying that you committed battery, because any unwanted offensive touching done without someone's consent is battery, which is a crime. You've created an unsafe environment at Paradise because of your unwillingness to always get explicit consent. Stefan has said that in the future, he's considering making people who stay at Paradise long term sign NDAs. For anybody staying here longer, there's going to be an NDA. Because nothing screams this is a safe space more than having to sign a contract promising that you won't speak about what happens in that space. In the title of this video, I called Paradise a cult. The reason I definitely think this qualifies as a cult is because of the way Stefan has responded to this entire controversy. On his Instagram, he regularly posts these inspirational quotes about how everyone who's against him is a toxic liar, and all of the truly good people are the ones who stick with him, and you shouldn't believe anything people are saying about him. A classic cult tactic is creating a narrative that anyone outside of the cult is just crazy and toxic and if you're a good person, you won't believe any of the bad things people are saying about the cult. And let's be real here, giving your community the name Paradise is a red flag in and of itself. A lot of cults want their members to feel like this is a paradise where you can finally be safe and free, but in reality, they're actually abusing the members of the cult. I thought this quote under a picture of Nathan Drake from Uncharted was really hilarious. Even if you hear a bad story about me, 
understand there was a time I was good to those people too, but they won't tell you that part. Even if you're nice to someone 95% of the time, that doesn't give you the right to hurt that person the other 5% of the time. Most abusers don't constantly hurt people, but that doesn't change the fact that they're still abusers. And if you hurt someone, that's naturally gonna be the first thing they bring up when talking about you. Stefan has even gone as far as to say that the real cult members are the people who believe all of the negative things being said about him. Even though all of the allegations I've brought up in this video have clear evidence to back them up, According to Stefan, all of the people in paradise are the only ones who aren't in a cult, and I'm the one who's actually in a cult for criticizing him. I'm sure Stefan would accuse me of making this video for clout, which is what he accuses everyone who criticizes him of doing. I am not going to gain clout from this. I have 10 times as many followers as you on TikTok. I am making this video because I think it's worth spreading awareness about your dangerous community, and if that upsets you, you can fucking cry about it. In my opinion, the lesson to take from all this is just to be very cautious online. Even if you find a community online that seems very safe and inclusive, it's always worth doing a little bit of research to see if that's actually the case, and to make sure that there isn't some creepy German man pulling the strings behind the scenes. I have a lot of respect for the women who had the courage to speak out about their experiences at Paradise, and I hope that through spreading awareness in this video, no more plus-sized women will fall prey to Stefan's bullshit. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. Don't forget to go subscribe to my second channel because I'm posting a lot of commentary videos on there, and don't forget to stay on the lookout for live streams on this channel. I'll see you soon.